Welcome to part 5 of the Key Smash Studios Unreal tutorial. In the previous video, we worked with displaying our inventory through Unreal's GUI system. In this video, we'll be doing blacklight mechanics, which will essentially just consist of attaching a light to the blacklight in the scene, attaching a trigger box to it, and then having the posters change whenever that trigger box is on them or not. So to begin, I'm going to go ahead and attach a spotlight component to my black light. And I'll go ahead and adjust some things. We're going to make the intensity higher. We're going to change the color to just some blue purpley color to represent the black light. And then we're going to make the outer cone smaller. And then as you can see, if you click off and back on it, it'll show the way it's going. And obviously we want it to go the opposite way. So we'll rotate the spotlight component 180 degrees. So that way it points forward. We'll go ahead and save. And then we'll move on to the posters themselves. So between the previous video and this video, I went ahead and created more materials and new UVs for the black light posters. And it just has a bluish purple circle on it with some Roman numerals. And what we're gonna do with those is actually go ahead and attach them onto the posters we currently have in the scene. So for this poster, we'll just switch it to the black light one. And it looks like it's backwards, so we'll just rotate it. 180 degrees and then the roman numeral sideways so we're just going to go ahead and rotate it 90 degrees and then we're also going to lower the poster so that way the black light will shine on it directly so we'll just do that with the other ones as well And then we also want to lower those, and we want to make sure they're the same height as this one. So we'll just copy it over to the others. From here, we'll go to our C++ classes, and we're going to create a new C++ class, and this will be a trigger box. And we'll just call this black light trigger box. So now that the black light script has been created, we're actually gonna go over to our character controller and add one thing real quick. So we wanna create a new property. And this property is going to be a bool that can be edit, that can edit anywhere. And it's going to be a way for us to tell whether our black light trigger box should be activated or not. And now that we have that, we'll go over to our CPP and you'll just find your wielding function. And at the top, you'll just default our black light trigger. To be false. And that's just saying that we don't want our black light trigger box to automatically be spawned in essentially every time that we're checking what we're wielding we only want it if the item that we're currently wielding is the black light and what we're doing here is we're just checking to see if the id is zero which is the id of our black light so if that's the case then we want to set the black light trigger box to be true 
now that we have that we can go over to our blacklight trigger box script and we're going to actually include a few things so the first thing that we're going to include is the character controller because we'll need to be able to get that blacklight trigger to see if it's true or false to determine whether we're going to spawn in or not our different posters so we'll include the character controller We'll also include the game framework for actor because every actor that we interact with with the trigger box we want to check it to see if it is a poster. And then we're also going to go ahead and type an include for the next script that we're going to make which will be called poster. So even though this doesn't exist yet, we're gonna go ahead and include that so we don't forget to do that later. So with our black light, we need to go ahead and create the basic things that are in the scripts, which is a protected and a public. Inside our protected, we're just gonna put a virtual void of begin play. Inside our public, we'll have our constructor for our black light for our black light trigger box, and then we're just going to create two functions. So we need the functions so that way we can determine when our poster is hovered on by the black light and when it is no longer when it no longer has the black light on it. So the first function that we're going to make is going to be called over poster, and it's going to take in a class actor and this will be overlapped actor and then it's also going to take in another actor and we'll just call this other actor the next function is going to be identical to this one except it's going to be named left poster and that function will be for determining what happens whenever our black light trigger box is no longer on the poster so we can go ahead and go to our cpp and as you can see this one is entirely blank. Obviously, the first thing we're going to add is going to be our constructor. And inside the constructor, we're going to add what function we're calling on begin overlap and in overlap. And then we'll just copy and paste that and then change this one to left poster. Okay, so I had a spelling error here. Just make sure it says an AA actor. And as you can see, that took care of the add dynamics issue. So now we'll go ahead and do our begin play function which will just be the basic begin play that's normally pre-built within the script and 
And now we can create our over poster function. And what we're going to be doing inside here is just checking every time we overlap another actor, checking to see if that actor happens to be a poster actor, and then getting from our character the black light trigger bull that we set up. And then if it is a poster needs to be activated, we'll set it activated in the scene or we'll deactivate it in the scene. Or we'll deactivate it in the scene in this function and set it active in the other one. So the first thing we want to do is have a few if statements so that way we can make sure that there is no null pointers at any point. So we're just making sure that other actor exists and that other actor does not equal this. After we know those to be true, we can go ahead and create a cast of a poster. And again, this a poster script has not yet been created. So if you try to compile at this point, it won't work. And then after we do that, we want to make sure that it casted successfully. So we'll just check that our temp poster isn't null. And then if that is also true, then we'll cast a character controller. And we'll find the character controller by getting the world, getting the first player controller in the world, and then getting our character. And then we'll check to make sure that that casted successfully. And if the player does exist, then we will check to see whether it's black light trigger box is true and should be activated. And if it is, then we'll set the temp post, which is the actor that the trigger box is interacted with, to be hidden in game. And now for our left poster, we can just copy and paste it change the function name to left poster and the hidden in game to be false because whenever our black light trigger box is no longer overlapping with the poster we want the regular poster to come back and the poster behind it which will be the black light poster to be hidden from it so now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and create our poster our poster actor class and we'll just name it poster So now we're going to create our poster class. We'll start in the header. And the only thing that the poster is going to need is a mesh. And so then we'll create a private. So we're going to go ahead and create the property for the item mesh. You want this to be edit anywhere. We want it blueprint read only. We'll have the category 
B mesh. And then we'll have allow private access be true. And then we're just going to make this a use static mesh component. And we'll call it item mesh, which is this up here. And then we need to include the components of the static mesh component. And that's our header for our poster. In the CPP, all we're going to do is go to the constructor. We're going to say that our item mesh is a created default subobject of a use static mesh. And then we'll just give it the text of item mesh. And then we'll attach the item mesh to the root component. And that is our whole poster functionality. All right, so I accidentally forgot to change the begin when I copy pasted this to end. So make sure that your first one that has the over poster is begin and your second one that has left poster is end. And then you can save, compile, so now that it's compiled, we'll go ahead and bring in a black light trigger box. And this is just going to be whatever you want it to be really, however far you want your black light field to go, however wide and however tall, that's what this is going to do. So I'm simply just going to kind of guess the gist of where I want it. And I'll leave it about right there. And then you want to make sure that this trigger box is underneath your black light. And then we're going to go ahead and drag in our poster. And then you can click on its mesh here. And you can add the poster and the material. So we'll go ahead and do the red one, and this will just be red poster art. And then you'll obviously want it to be equal to the one behind it. And we'll put this inside poster objects. And now we'll do the same for the other, the other two. My green poster has seemed to have disappeared. So I'll just copy one of these posters, switch this back to the green black light art. 
rotate this 90 degrees. Push it back against the wall. And then I'll drag in this poster. And finish up these posters. Like so. And then we'll go ahead and save. When you click play, grab the black light, shine it on the different posters, and the numbers show up. And that's this week's episode on how to do black lights to create a puzzle within an escape game. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. See you next time.